joined in battle for the British title. They just have slipped out of their chance of getting the qualifying mark now, heading for something more like 231, and the Olympic qualifying mark was 229.30. But they both know finishing first, Brit here, is so important. And uh, without Steph Twell, she's dropped out. Lily Partridge has dropped out. It's between these two. Both taking just about their final fueling there and taking it uh, fairly seamlessly. But yes, that gap is uh, is slightly larger than it looks on that shot there. But Cochrane is certainly closing in on Naomi Mitchell. And uh, what a race we have for the British title. But Sarah Hall, there we are, moving up into third place past Bakiri of Ethiopia. Now, Bakiri will have been perhaps surprised by that. But uh, what you have to do when you're moving as well as Sarah Hall is when you pick up an athlete, you are just ruthless. You keep on going. You don't give that athlete a chance to latch on to the back of you. And immediately, she's 10 metres past her. So Sarah Hall is flying at the moment. On for a PB. She was hoping perhaps to get close to 2.20. She's not going to do that, but I think she is going to get uh, below her personal best and below 2.22, but she really is moving very, very well indeed. When we talk about the East Africans and their endurance events, you talk about their altitude training. Sarah Hall is an athlete that spends a tremendous amount of time at, at altitude, and she's recently been in Crested Butte in Colorado, which is extremely high, really a ski resort over in Colorado to prepare for this and um, responds well to, to altitude, and it, she's reaping the rewards now. Well, I think this is a really strong performance in, in all respects, given that uh, she may be went off a bit quick, was in no man's land, wasn't she, with the Pacers, and has put together a brilliant second half of the race. And Chepin Gaitich just looks as though she's rallied a little bit now. She's on birdcage walk. Sarah Hall will be about to come round the corner in uh, maybe another 20 seconds or so. It was a good minute and a half, uh, a lap, sort of two laps ago, there's a minute and a half gap. She, she comes round the corner, it's probably maybe a bit under a minute. She'll be able to see her, it's a long way ahead, there she is. But Chepin Gaitich knows when she comes round to the finish line, this time she's only got one lap left. So Sarah Hall, there's the gap, the camera foreshortening it somewhat. But I uh, just think Chepin Gaitich looks a little bit stronger again. No, I think you're right. That there is the large gap, but but Sarah's got the advantage here. She can she can see that second place. She knows what she's aiming for, and uh, I'm sure she'll absolutely empty the tank in this last lap and a half. Well, you don't often hear this in the marathon, but there's the bell. Did anyone hear it? There it is. Takes the bell. A lap to go. Sprint finish. Well, almost a sprint finish. Uh, Koskai, the way which she's put this race together, really has run a very very strong last uh, 10k 211 she just went through and so just working that out that was a pretty quick uh, section or about as quick as the previous 5k 1641 for that one so through 40k 525 for uh, that previous mile just stayed strong and she stayed I would say stayed confident. I think there was a period where she was probably questioning what might happen. There's Sinead Diver, who's on about 2.26 pace, the American, sorry, the Australian having a very good run, having been paced a, a lot of the way by Susan Crummins, and then holding on to a position well. But being lapped by the leader, as most people in this race have been. In fact, uh, Probably, I think only the top six won't be lapped. So, Koskai on her last lap. Time's not important now. Sarah Hall chasing in third place at the moment. And then in the British race, the two of them together now, Naomi Mitchell with Natasha Cockrum. They've still got an extra lap to do, if you like, when they come round there before they, they'll hear the bell. Who's going to win this one, Hannah? Um, uh, this is this has been so fascinating to see the lead change between these those two and and Natasha Cochran rally and come back to Naomi Mitchell is really impressive there. 
caught a glimpse as well of Vivian Chariot in the in the background behind the two British athletes. And for Vivian Chariot, it's been a bit of a struggle today. She was one of the big three Kenyans coming into this. But I think we knew if uh, Bridget Koskai was near her best form that she would be uh, very, very hard to beat and able to uh, afford herself a little look around. Uh, she should know that she's a long way clear of Ruth Chip and Getich in second place. I think the, the interesting thing, though, is Ruth Chip and Getich, can she hang on? She should be able to hang on just on this final lap over Sarah Hall, even though the American is moving very, very well indeed. Just going to wait to see Sarah Hall's time through 40K. I think it's approaching a minute, so there's no way uh, Chip and Getich, uh, to me, didn't look as though she was going to fall apart that much there she is chep and Gatich, sarah hall still yet to go through so i think the top three positions pretty much set now i got that as 40 seconds between second and third coming into that that last lap and um you'd say yeah you'd say 40 seconds is a big enough buffer there for ruth chep in second place but you can see bridget koskai just striding out in the front really looking like she's got this wrapped up fighting for the racing line there over gerda stein the south african it was rather taken by surprise uh you spot on uh hannah yeah. there you can see sarah hall and then bakiri sarah hall 40 seconds she has made up about 40 seconds in the last three miles but she hasn't got enough time i don't think to catch the world champion so bridget koskai who's had such a phenomenal two or three years and she won chicago in 2018 set herself up as uh, one of the world's best marathon runners having finished second to vivian chariot here in london earlier on that year and then went on to come and win in London last April, April 2019, of course, and then went on to Chicago this time last year in October and tore apart the world record. I'm not sure who she's looking for, but there's nobody in sight. Two minutes, she has a lead now, which is testimony to her strength and what's been a tough race you have to say that it has been a tough race for many they did go out at a pace which uh, suggested they could break the women's only world record when it was raining and dark earlier on if you were with us uh, prior to eight o'clock and then it slowed and it's continued to slow really and then Koska herself the last 10k has managed to re-establish her pace and a rhythm almost a smile there uh, on her face but she looks comfortable and she looks good. She does, and she, she talked about she's got twin children and she talked about them being proud of her running and how normally the time she spends apart from them is very hard and uh, she spent a bit more time at home with lockdown, but uh, she was excited to, to make them proud again today. And what an interesting uh, three, four weeks, I think. Uh, Andrew mentioned earlier on, she went to run in Brussels in the one hour race. Uh, where Mo Farah broke the men's world record of the uh, for the one hour, and Sifan Hassan in a great race with Koskai, it has to be said, and it was a good test for Koskai, but then she got disqualified as she passes Tish Jones here for the second time. And she got disqualified for putting a, uh, a couple of strides on the inside of the track. Uh, no problems today. She's uh, kept to the racing line very well. So this, she'll remember last year when she came round with all of the crowds and the cheering and the atmosphere. None of that today, but the result is the same. Buckingham Palace off to her left. And the final turns into the last few hundred metres of a very different London Marathon in 2020. The whole world is been changed in the sporting world itself has struggled to find a way to move forward and here in London everybody must be so pleased that they've managed to get the world's best runners here once more and for Bridget Koskai it's business as usual perhaps not in the way she was able to prepare for this race not in the way in which the race itself has been contested not in the way in which the course has been laid out for her but She's come back as the Bridget Cost guy we know and the Bridget Cost guy which we've seen over the last two years. Dominant, quicker than everybody else, so strong in the latter stages. 
and has beaten the cause, she's beaten the rain, and she's beaten all of her rivals here. Bridget Koskai wins the 2020 London Marathon. The time